Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's time to jump back into Project Cars. Now we've been going through the uh, career and uh, I did record the start of my career but unfortunately uh, what happened was is that uh, the audio was terrible so <laughs> I've deleted that video when we're resuming from uh, from where we uh, where we were last which is a couple of kart races into uh, Project Cars single player starting right from the beginning. So let's go and continue where we were. Now, in terms of settings so far, what I've changed is I've turned the force feedback down a little bit. Uh, I've reduced the graphics a little bit so it runs a bit faster on the simulation side. And uh, that's about it, really. Oh, turn the volume down because uh, for some reason, Oculus Home audio volume levels are, are ridiculously high in Project Cars. And if you haven't gone high, the, uh, the sound starts clipping a bit. So I've turned that down. Uh, let me just one thing I have found when you sat in your car you want to reset the view you need to sit back a bit so you don't end up behind the uh, <laughs> you don't end up behind your your model or inside your driver's neck uh, which is always a problem in life where you you know you sit in a go-kart and you end up with your head dislocating itself I keep forgetting I can use the, uh, the steering wheel to control uh, options here We almost jump the start there. Let's uh, reset the view. There we go. Oh no, we sat ourselves back behind our heads. What I need to do is bind a button on the steering wheel to reset the view, which you can do, but it doesn't matter. This will do for now. <laughs> As we go, for some reason, we're starting at the front, which makes things a lot easier. Now, one thing I did notice with uh, Project Cars with the go karts, which was really nice, is. Well, with the. We're getting <laughs> attacked here. With the go karts. You get so oh right in his bumper. You get so much uh, better visibility with VR. It makes go karts a lot more enjoyable than playing on a screen. Even more so with than uh, full size cars because I think if you've played driving simulators on the screen with go karts, you tend to just end up being right looking right in front of the uh, the dash, and all you can really see is the uh, the steering wheel. And you just lose all that awareness and visibility. And because go-karts at their scale are essentially like mini F1 cars. If you scale, you know, the track scale down, the car size is scaled down. Everything's really nippy. Whoa, we just lost the back in there. Everything's really nippy and snappy. You need that awareness. Oh, we're finished there. We're only two lap races at the start. You can increase them, but we've just got it on super noob mode. Uh, but yeah, you need that awareness. To be able to tell, you know, what's what's around you, how close you are to the cars, and the 3D and the head tracking, particularly with go karts, is really noticeable. That was terrible. That was our first race. We're, we're all right with that. Oh, it's nice and sunny now, so we'll do better. Sunlight looks really cool, actually. So we'll continue on. Yeah, you can increase the race length and uh, do full length go kart races if you want to, but we're just snapping through these early modes of Project Cars. And what I've done as well is um, I've been playing this on pretty much out of the box settings as I say we have turned the force feedback down a bit but I'm using pretty much the default force feedback settings pretty much the default graphics settings and well gets in a bit of a slap of this other than uh, turning all the sis off and stuff like that everything is out of the box just to give us a sort of informed opinion of what it would be like for most people and uh, we're playing it with the rift I think trail braking with these go-karts is really, really tricky. And they don't give, uh, despite turning the force feedback down, they, they don't give that much feel in the, in the steering. Now, obviously, in real-world go-karts, you don't get that much feel from the steering, especially with the quality of most go-karts in the UK, unless you put a lot of money down. Uh, the, the feeling is, of course, through your bottom. With driving simulators, there is no bottom feel unless you've got an elaborate sim rig. And even then, with the elaborate sim rigs, it's somewhat limited. So it's a shame that the uh, the default force feedback doesn't give you a bit more feel with the go karts. But I think that's uh, that's often a problem with a lot of simulators. Actually, with, with go karts in particular, I keep losing it there. With go karts in particular, in that they're so snappy, it's hard for uh, for the developers and the, and the hardware to really pick up on the nuances of the cars. Then with fast, uh, with the full scale cars, uh, the force feedback's not too bad. When I was driving the Caterham, uh, it, well, it's not too bad. You get good feel for what the cars do in the load of the car in general, uh, and you know braking. 
it's, it's reasonably intuitive to drive from feel, but these, these go-karts are particularly difficult if you like to drive from uh, force feedback feel. Same, I think, with the, oh no, with the Formula cars in Project Cars. They're a bit tight and a bit lacking in feel. Oh, two lap race done. So, that was terrible. Let's restart it. Let's see if we can do better than that. Now, what I have noticed with the AI, and you saw it a bit there, was when you uh, go on the tail of them, if you tap the AI in front of you, they sort of just slow down, which you kind of get stuck to them and glued to them a bit, um, which can make it a lot harder to pass than you might expect. Uh, the, the trick, I think, is to just stay out of the way of the AI and be fast. <laughs> but it's really, really, really punishing. Okay, try not to trail break there. We can hear the tire squeal. Quite like the tire squeal sound in project cars, actually. Sounds reasonably realistic. And, uh, you know, it gives you a clue as to what the tires are doing. Sound is something in driving simulators that really can't be uh, overstated as to how important it is to have good deep sound to inform you what's going on. Oh, we've been overtaken there. You're not getting past, mate. Try breaking more in a straight line. I think the key with these go-karts is to um, get into the corner, sort of lean on the, the understeer of them. That's when they're stable. And not try trail braking unless you're super delicate. I mean, in real life, go-karts do have a habit, if you, you know, if you put the brake on too hard, of just rotating because they've got such a small wheelbase. Oh, we've done it again. It's if you if you turned at a tight angle, we just blocked him off. If you're turned at a tight angle, then it gets it. The speed at which you start getting to that unrecoverable rotation state increases, and the back end comes around. So we have to try and avoid that. Whoa, he's kicked up some dirt. <laughs> it's really nice and nippy through there. This is quite a nice go kart track. And surprisingly, actually, the the first go kart track you get in Project Cars, the very first event you do. It's actually a pretty difficult track because it's not particularly flat and it's got lots of blind corners. And uh, I'm surprised that they didn't put a uh, this track as the very first go-kart track. Just to make things a bit more simple as an introduction. But then again, with the way you play Project Cars, you can uh, jump into just about any car in the game at any point in the game and then continue and do your career wherever you want. Uh, we just chose to start right at the beginning. We'll continue here, even though we had a <laughs> disaster race. Oh, return to dashboard. Let's see what happens. Nice bit of techno music there. All the, the team won't be happy. We won all uh, the previous races before this. As I say, the video that didn't record properly. So we should be okay. We're going back to Summerton. <laughs> we click enter. There we go. Now, I'm also getting used to using the buttons on the steering wheel to navigate the menus. And uh, once, once you're sort of aware of what does what with the buttons in terms of navigating the menus, it's not too bad. Not as easy as using a, a mouse and keyboard to navigate the menus. Uh, and not as easy as uh, Live for Speed has a really good selection system where you just use your face as a mouse cursor and then you press a button. Uh, again, I think that's a lot easier. Oh, I've not been to this track before, so here we go. Whoa! The AI are normally a little bit slow off the start, which gives you the opportunity, if you're not particularly fast in go-karts or particularly fast in project cars, to get ahead of them. <laughs> this track is really cool. Again, with the go-karts being so low to the ground uh, and in VR, you really do get to see the uh, track undulations and the track texture, and it feels a lot faster in VR. When I played this, uh, this mode... Whilst the game is in development, when I play with the go-karts on a screen, it feels a lot slower, but with VR, it feels super quick. I mean, these are fairly nippy little carts with gears, but you just get a much better sense of speed with the uh, with the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive. Look at the little flags. That's really nice. Gonna block off the inside. <laughs> We're doing all right on this track. There's nothing. There's no uh, super tight corners. That's the key. Oh, this, this corner's pretty tight. But other than that, <laughs> we're in there. No AI can pass us. We are going 
terribly slow though. I know we can uh, use a lot more of the track. And we can be a little bit more aggressive on the brake. And we can carry more speed through these corners. Nicely actually in Project Cars with the go-karts, you can clip the curbing without it uh, destabilising the car too much unless you're in a very sharp turn. But in a lot of cases you can hit the curbing in a way that I think you probably would in real life. Uh, especially with the, you know, these go-kart tracks where they design the curbing to sort of be hit. Um, so that's again quite nicely done. For some reason it says we're second. Oh, that's just our points. So that's our overall from the... Uh, from the series as we go to race number two sun setting again that's another really nice thing with project cars the uh, and again something you really notice in vr uh, the, the different lighting because project cars has so much uh, dynamicism i'm sure that's not a real word but i just said it anyway to the lighting way it was close you get to see the tracks in a really different quality through uh, all the different times of day and then all the different types of weather and it makes replaying the tracks a lot more enjoyable, I think. Oh. <laughs> Don't know why the AI seems to be a bit slow on this track. A bit of an itchy nose. I think it might be uh, beard shaving time. When it gets to that point, you either let it grow out, <laughs> you... Uh, you either sustain the torture for a week or so and let it grow out and you pass the itchy phase, or you, uh, or you just wuss out and you shave it off <laughs> and go back to uh, step one again. It depends if you're going to be uh, if you're going to man it out with a proper beard or not. Look at this! It's all about winning here. It's probably not making good viewing for you guys. Let's look at our brakes. <laughs> because there's no one for me to battle against. Oh, there will be in a minute if I do that again. Now, one thing uh, with the AI, actually, in Project Cars is that... Uh, and, and nicely, I think, in comparison to... Uh, I've been playing the Forza 6 Apex on the PC with the, with the Xbox 360 controller... The a in, in comparison to that, the AI in Project Cars is a lot nicer in the sense that, that they get bunched up in a more authentic way in, in Project Cars. In Forza, what I noticed happening a lot was you'd get two or three cars miles ahead and then you won't, it'd be really hard to catch up with them even if you put them on a moderate AI setting. Also, because of the way Forza works, you tend to most of the events in Forza are designed so that you you start at the back and you sort of work your way forwards through the uh, through the uh, through the through the grid, and that's the event you start pretty much like fifteenth or something, and you got to get in the top three. <laughs> so far in the PC version of Forza, that has been just about every single event. Whereas in in Project Cars, what's nice is that you um, you know you just a proper itch, you know. So what you, with Project Cars, you just join the race as you would normally, and it kind of takes your position from where, where you are in the league and what have you, or in the events, and it feels way, way more natural and way more authentic to, I think, actually doing proper, you know, a proper race series or if you were taking part in a proper karting series. There we go, race one. Don't know why we were second in race one. I don't know how that works, but we were first in uh, race two, so that's, that's all that matters. We'll take those championship points. We do need them. One thing I think Project Cars does... Oh, congratulations! We've got an email. Okay, we've got to check our email. We'll go to our inbox. Invitation to... Show that. Okay, accept. I just deleted it by accident. Oh, I, think, I think it's displayed on the... Uh, menu anyway. Uh, yeah, one thing that... Um, Forza does better than Project Cars though is when you finish events the way you get the gold, silver and bronze and the medals and where the medal system adds up and each event feels quite rewarding as you see your stats building up after doing it and it you know it gives you nice feedback and it it's just patting on the back constantly in Project Cars when you finish an event and, and bits and bobs it feels somewhat meaningless it's not as rewarding in that in that arcadey sense of progression 
Now, in Project Project Cars might be more of a realistic way of doing it. In, in real life, it's not... You know, you don't get a little gold, silver, bronze for each event. But in real life, you, you, you know, they have a, at the end of each race, they put people on a stand and they give out medals and stuff. So it would have been nice, I think, for Project Cars to have more stuff like that. This is a, a nice go-kart track. <laughs> As I say, if you're wondering about the, the video being a little bit stuttery, that's because, as I say, Project Cars itself is running under the uh, required 90 hertz of the screen, partly because of uh, Project Cars being quite a heavy game, but also because I'm recording on top of that. But thanks to Asynchronous Time Warp, for me, my view is obviously different to what you're seeing in the video because that's a separate render of the game or separate view of what the game's rendering. But for me on the headset, everything is very smooth apart from the very occasional stutter and sometimes if I turn my head left and right quickly you see sort of a, a black shimmer at the sides. But for all intents and purposes when driving normally, thanks to asynchronous time warp, Project Cars runs absolutely fantastic on the, uh, on the Rift. What, I, what we are waiting for is an official Vive version of Project Cars. You can get Project Cars working on the Vive at the moment with sort of hacked uh, drivers but it suffers from pop-up and some other issues so I don't really want to test that until we can test it properly with, with a version of the game that's intended for the Vive and uh, Slightly Mass Studios have said they, they are working on it and it's coming so keep going Greenwood nice nice go-kart track We're doing all right here. We'll keep winning. Whoa! AI taking the go-kart right over the curb and in the uh, rolling start there. Not sure where he's gone. This track's really nice and uh, flowing, actually. I'd love to drive this in real life. In some ways, I think uh, flat go-kart tracks actually work. I mean, this isn't completely flat. You can see there's more subtle undulations in the track, but... Flat go-kart tracks are quite satisfying, though. And normally with full-size cars, I much prefer, I much prefer um, undulating tracks, like Knock Hill, Brands Hatch, Laguna Seca, to to flat tracks like Silverstone. Although I do quite like Silverstone now, I'm getting used to it. But with go-karts, I, I think my, I, it might just be because simulators might struggle a bit with the undulations, so the carts get a bit unpredictable. But I like the way how flatter tracks are quite predictable <laughs> with with project cars at least and it makes and that makes it more enjoyable to actually just drive it because you know what's going to happen this this track's got quite beasty curbing on the inside of some of the corners that you really wouldn't want to hit and again you can see how, how how high the curbing is a lot more clearly and, and from playing on a screen Mostly, most of my go-kart experience with simulators is with uh, R-Factor 1 going back quite a bit. But with that, there'd be certain curbs you'd hit on tracks and you'd, you'd wonder why it's caused the go-kart to go absolutely crazy. But it'll be because the, the curbing was pretty high. Um, and, but you couldn't tell the difference between the flat curbing and the high curbing because there was no 3D. You just have to work it out through uh, practice and experience. <laughs> it's nice how when you uh, shift gear you get a little bit of a, a, a shunt and you can also because of the perception of speed whoa we get a bit of oversteer there because of the perception of speed you can much more clearly feel where in the RPM range or where the acceleration is coming through and feel the acceleration and braking which it makes, makes it again much more satisfying whoa <laughs> caught that we're going totally wonky pretty uh Forgiving and progressive, actually, this go-kart. Not bad. Oh, this is something I noticed. When you finish an event, this bar at the bottom sometimes defaults onto restart. It's a little bit of a problem because then you accidentally end up restarting when you've won a race, which would be really annoying if you'd just done a, you know, like a full, full-length race and then you accidentally restart it. Uh, so maybe... I don't know if they're going to fix that. It's, it's a sort of small thing that could be really annoying. Uh, maybe it's just a little bug that can be fixed. Oh, one! 
Make sure to check your inbox, as you will no doubt have received new contract offers. You there we go. Renew your contract with your current team and stay on for another season. So, as I say, that's what you get in, in Project Cars when you win the championship. It just says, fantastic, you've won it. But this, that's not really satisfying. It does have a little picture of a medal. But, you know, it could have had like a, a more of a fanfare, some confetti. I don't know. Just something a little bit more spectacular than, a, than something on the menu. <laughs> it's a bit of an anticlimax. So, uh, but there, there we go. We've, we've finished the karting championship. Congratulations to myself. I'm now ready to uh, move on to losing even more money and even more expensive motorsport. So uh, that's, that's the progression of a uh, race driver's career. The sky looks fantastic. Nice clouds there moving in. So uh, there you go. We'll continue this uh, career, I think, with another video. We're going to stop this one for now. Thanks for watching this. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like. And also, if you've got any questions, you want to know anything, uh, drop a comment. Drop, a, drop your questions in the comment box. It didn't make any sense. So I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.